Aristotle. The Greek philosopher and scientist once declared in the third century BC, the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. What he meant by his definition of art is that a painting is not the same as a photograph, because art incorporates the artist's interpretation. His centuries-old definition still resonates with us today. Despite most of us being taught that art is just a depiction of beauty, it is rather the instillment of the artist into their own perception of the truth. Today, we try to discover the so-called truth with science, studying both the physical and natural world with experimentation and evidence. But what we've forgotten is that art undertakes the same purpose with its emphasis on empiricism. Artists use observation as evidence. These two fields are solutions to the same problem. How do we understand the world around us? They provoke us to overcome the fear of the unknown, to be able to visualize things in our minds, and to observe the world acutely. People often tell me it's unusual I chose to invest myself into two completely different realms. But I disagree. I don't think I have. My name is Anna Mishenko, and I'm both a passionate artist and scientist. And today I'm here to oppose the common notion that art and science are completely separate from one another. Like many of you, I used to believe that art was simply self-expression, combining aesthetically pleasing images to create pretty pictures drawn freely without any rules. And contrastingly, that science was rigid exploration, integrating countless data and experiments into hypotheses. However, if we look towards two historical examples where art reflected scientific breakthroughs, and a few ways in which science is embedded inside of artwork, we can see that art and science couldn't be more related in their approaches to observation, that art is a science in itself. Today, I'll demonstrate how art is research, how art reflects natural phenomena, and how art is embedded with systems. First, let us consider the research aspect. During the Enlightenment in the 15th and 16th centuries, Leonardo da Vinci, though we most commonly recognize him for his famous artwork, revolutionized approaches to scientific research. Da Vinci was the ultimate polymath, a painter, sculptor, inventor, and scientist. At his time, most people obtained their knowledge from religious writings or from previous scientists. But he was the outlier. Da Vinci refused to use the Bible as his textbook and instead turned towards his studies of nature strolling along the Arno and investigating rock formations, caves, flowers, and fossils. His observations prompted him to start a notebook on the human anatomy in 1489, recording in great detail what he noticed about eye sockets and the human muscle, tendon, and skeletal systems. And almost 20 years later, da Vinci sparked a breakthrough in his scientific career with the discovery of the four powers of the world, movement, force, weight, and percussion, and his studies of arms and legs led to the invention of the lever. But his success in closely studying the human body didn't end there. Da Vinci's renowned Vitruvius man was at the epitome of art meets science, illustrating an in-depth analysis on the human proportion. Ancient Roman architect Vitruvius hypothesized the mathematics of ratios to proportions but couldn't quite prove his theories to be correct. It was only until years later that da Vinci's intricate sketch could successfully refine Vitruvius's theories and perfectly illustrate them. In keen observation, the Renaissance man revolutionized approaches to scientific research through the use of art in his interdisciplinary perspective, starting the scientific revolution. Da Vinci embodied a scientist within an artist ultimately proving to us how art is also a method of research. Next, let us consider natural phenomena. An artist's accidental discovery was only first noticed in 2004, when the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image of an expanding supergiant. The image led scientists to notice an eerie resemblance. The astronomers reported the photograph bears remarkable similarities to a famous work. 
complete with never before seen spirals of dust swirling in trillions of miles of interstellar space. The scientists globally digitized the painting and measured brightness variation between pixels, ultimately proving their suspicions should be correct. They discovered a scaling law with the same repeated patterns at different scales, forming a ratio like in the statistical theory of turbulence. Do any of you perhaps notice the resemblance to a famous work? Well, here's your answer. Everyone knows Starry Night, the famous painting by renowned artist Vincent van Gogh. While this beautiful painting has been greatly appreciated for its use of color and scenery, it is lesser known that van Gogh accurately portrayed a scientific phenomenon that will be discovered 60 years later. This theory is called turbulent flow and fluid dynamics, where light resembles a fluid. According to Britannica, turbulence is a type of flow in which the fluid undergoes irregular fluctuations or mixing. The speed of a fluid at a point is constantly changing in both magnitude and direction. In simpler terms, turbulence is the way light moves, swirls, and interacts with itself. Russian mathematician Andrei Kolmogorov hypothesized his mathematical theory of turbulence 60 years after Van Gogh painted Starry Night. Kolmogorov investigated eddies, which are currents that diverge away from the main pattern of a current and generally flow in circular motions, creating turbulence in their irregular patterns. He attempted to explain these irregular patterns with a mathematical formula called the five-thirds law. It related the size of one eddy of light to five-thirds the power of its energy. Now, is this five-thirds ratio present in Starry Night? Well, surely enough, it is. With Kolmogorov's approach, we can observe that larger eddies will disperse into smaller ones, similar to an energy cascade, which appears everywhere in oceans, in cloud formations, in interstellar dust particles, and in Jupiter's famous red spot. The miracle of Van Gogh's art is that at a period of intense suffering, he was able to represent one of the most supremely difficult concepts of nature down to mathematical precision, combining the mysteries of fluid and light in his illustrations of stars and clouds passing in turbulent swirls. What is most fascinating is that turbulence cannot be observed by the human eye. The true mystery lies in not the theory of fluid dynamics, but in exactly how Van Gogh saw and represented the effect of moving light. His perception was so accurate that his artwork could perfectly align with a scientific principle, displaying to us that observation from two perspectives, art and science can produce the same results. Perhaps Van Gogh's genius approach to observation and seeking understanding of the world surrounding him ultimately led to the flawless expression of science. Now, let us consider systems within art. Take a look at, for example, linear perspective. Perspective is a systematic method to realize art into reality. Renaissance artists Leon Battista Alberti and architect Filippo Brunelleschi developed it during the 15th century to transform flat imagery into revolutionary three-dimensional scenery. Their solution was simple. Converge all straight lines into a single point called the vanishing point. With their method of plotting points and using lines in a systematic way, they could magically give a painting form and depth. One vanishing point perspective is still consistently used in artwork today. In science, systems and theories are applied to always hold true in nature, like the force of gravity. In artwork, linear perspective is also an applied system which always yields dimension to convey reality. Now let's take a look at a different system. The golden ratio is a special mathematical proportion that is present all throughout the natural world. Examine nature closely and you'll find it in oceans and cloud formations and spiral galaxies and flower petals and shells. The so-called divine proportion gets its name for infusing balance, beauty, and visual harmony. 
It's no wonder that the ratio is carefully utilized in famous artwork like The Last Supper or The School of Athens. Great artists have subconsciously noticed this mathematical proportion and embedded it into a law. The golden ratio became their solution to creating pleasing aesthetics. Like perspective, it is yet another example of a system within art. Similarly to the way theories and systems in science define the natural world, perspective and the golden ratio define the visual one. So what we can learn from da Vinci's approach to observation, Van Gogh's starry night, and the use of perspective in the golden ratio is that just like science, art is the pursuit of truth. They're like two roads converging to the same destination. We can define science as the understanding of how the natural world works through observing physical evidence, and art does exactly that. Perhaps once we realize that these two disparate fields have the same purpose, we can once again revolutionize the scientific method, evoke radical innovation, or overcome difficult scientific concepts through producing artwork. In today's rapidly changing world, we are transitioning from STEM to STEAM as art trespasses over new boundaries. There's a whole future of possibility. The emergence of a new artistic genre called bioart, the study of the alchemy of paint, or the em employment of arts therapy as a new medical approach to healing in chronic disease patients. The modern fusion of art and science is unfolding everywhere, such as the Orbit Pavilion and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This golden ratio infused dome is more than just a sculpture. Step inside and you'll hear the tracking signals of 19 satellites and the International Space Station that could help us better understand the Earth and possibly communicate with other spacecrafts. Throughout history and even today, we have seen that art and science couldn't be more related to one another. It is the artist's employment of observation of the world surrounding them that allows the artist to achieve Aristotle's inward significance in seeking to grasp a new understanding. It has been too long that we have viewed the world categorically, acknowledging these centuries-old domains as discrete from one another. In order for us to look towards the future and further harness advanced concepts, we must first recognize that art is a science. Thank you.